Clark with the Women's Club in Richmond, Virginia, and I'm here with Georgia Hunter, who is speaking with us today about her book, We Were the Lucky Ones. Georgia, so tell me, how did you get inspired to write this book? That is a good question. So this is a book that tracks my grandfather and his siblings and his parents, a family of Polish Jews, as they scattered the start of the Second World War on this sort of twofold mission to survive and to reunite. Um, it's a piece of my family history that I had no idea existed until I was 15. So thanks to a high school English assignment, um, I just interviewed my grandmother, discovered this piece of my grandfather's story. Years later at a family reunion, heard other bits and pieces of the greater Kirk family story, and then became, I think the idea was seeded and couldn't quite let it go. I had to, had too much curiosity. I had to do the, the research to unearth and record the story. Wow, how did you even begin with that research? It just seems daunting, the amount yeah. of information to find and where do you find it? It was a big task. So I first started with interviews, oral histories, collecting as many as I could through mostly second generation survivors. There's, there's a one year old who you meet in the book. Her name is Felicia, my great aunt. She's still alive. She had first hand memories. So I met with her first. She's living in Paris. I flew to Brazil to meet with relatives there across the states. And then once I exhausted the oral history piece, I started looking for outside research. So with archives, ministries, magistrates, anywhere that might have a record pertaining to my family. And little by little, the story came together. And, and here we are. <laughs> That's wonderful. Um, the, the story is about um, the four siblings and their, their adventures or experiences during this time. Um, how did you get them started? So that's a good question. When I went into the research, I felt like maybe there would be two storylines. My grandfather was the only member of his family not living in Poland. At the start of the war, he was in France. The rest of the family remained in Poland, so I felt like there would be a Polish storyline and then a France to Brazil storyline. Immediately, though, I realized that all of the relatives in Brazil, in Poland, excuse me, scattered, and they all had their own paths to survival. So how I kept track was through a color-coded timeline. <laughs> it's like a 50-page rainbow of a document that I you know, color-coded by a sibling and who was where and when. And then I also peppered in historical context, what was going on at the time from a military, historical, you know, political um, perspective, which a lot of times they had no idea. So and, and that, those bits were actually so helpful for me. Um, you'll, you'll find them in the book, kind of in between chapters. Um, so yeah, it's, it all started with a timeline. And then, then I had to figure out what do I do with that, and I decided to... Um, I, I wanted it to read like a novel, like uh, something that my, my kids and their kids and their kids could read and sort of step into the shoes of their family members and, and think about what it would have felt like to be there. Is there any story that um, surprised you, that, that totally took you off guard I mean, out of all the crazy stories? I feel like to me, um, halfway through the research and writing of the book, my first son was born and so all of a sudden uh, my grandfather's older sister Mila's storyline became very relevant. She had a daughter, Felicia, at the start of the war, and so imagining what it was like to be a mother alone with no idea where her husband was with this one-year-old child and what that took to keep her alive, to make those decisions, often split-second decisions, and, and how to keep her daughter safe when you decide to put her in the care of somebody else. Um, I think those, those chapters were probably the most eye-opening and heart-wrenching for me to write um, and probably meant the most to me. Um, and do you have another project? I do, I do. I have an idea for another book. It'll be historical fiction and possibly with um, two storylines, one set in, in the present. Um, and I think it'll draw on World War II and Holocaust theme, but also on the ancestry theme and the mother-daughter theme that I was just talking about, because that really resonated with me and I think it really resonated with a lot of readers too. Your book has created so much buzz. It's been on the New York Times bestseller list. You are traveling uh, oh. from place to place <laughs> talking about your book. When will you find the time to write? That is a great question. <laughs> 2019. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much for um, being here and joining us at Woman's Club. Oh, Thank you for having me. It's really an honor.